So, as you already know, there is quite a bit of speculation over what the driver lineup for Mercedes will look like in 2022. But the obvious answer is Hamilton and Russell for 2022, unless Hamilton decides to retire at the end of the season. But with all that Bottas bashing going on, what no one is really asking is, is Hamilton really a more talented driver than Russell? Okay, so before all you Hamilton fans start with how he is the GOAT and list all his records that will probably never be broken, here is a little context why I asked this question. Agreed. Hamilton is a 7-time world champion with over 100 poles and soon to be over 100 Grand Prix victories. Compared to that, Russell has never been on a F1 podium yet with only one point to his name in the last three years in Formula 1. But as it is with comparing any two drivers, it is impossible to compare two drivers who joined the sport 10 years apart purely based on stats. Also, it would be unfair to compare Hamilton's first three years in uh, F1 with Russell's. Hamilton in his career has always been in cars that are capable of finishing in top three and almost a decade in cars that are capable of winning championships. Russell on the other hand has always been in the worst or probably the second to worst cars on the grid. So comparing their performance in Formula 1 leads us to nowhere. That being said, there are still some stats in Formula 1 which we can still use to get a more or less fair comparison between these two drivers. Hamilton, since he joined Mercedes, had four seasons completed with Rosberg and four completed seasons with Bottas so far. When you look at his head-to-head -head stats with the teammates, you will see that he is not as consistent as you thought he would be. In 2013, he has a win-lose ratio with Rosberg of 11 to 8 in qualifying and 8 to 8 in race, taking into account only the finish races in that season. In 2014, it was 7 to 11 for qualifying and 10 to 4 for the races. In 2015, it was 12 to 7 for qualifying and 11 to 16 for races. And in 2016, it was 12 to 8 for qualifying and 10 to 9 for races. That gives him a total qualifying success rate over Rosberg of 55%. You would imagine that in the Bottas era, the numbers would have drastically improved, but it is not as different as you would have thought. In 2017, Hamilton had a 13 to 6 qualifying success rate. In 2018, it was 15 to 6, and in 2019 and 2020, they were 14 to 7 and 11 to 5, respectively. This gives him a total qualifying success rate over both us of 68%. The way to read this is Rosberg beat Hamilton almost half the qualifying while a third of the time. Now let's compare this to the stats of Russell so far. Russell had a perfect debut season in 2019, qualifying higher than his then teammate Kubica 100% of the time. He had an almost perfect race result as well, with Kubica finishing ahead of Russell only twice that season. It was a very similar story in 2020 as well, with Russell having a 100% record in qualifying and only finishing behind Latifi twice in the races last season. The only race where he was out-qualified by a teammate last year was against Botas in Sakir Grand Prix, but he still came two tenths away from pole uh, in a car he had driven only on a couple of practice sessions. Now, there are many ways you can explain away these stats, but what cannot be ignored is how close Russell got 
to winning the Saki Grand Prix with so little experience. And that makes me wonder, what would be the head-to-head -head stats if Hamilton and Russell are paired next year in Mercedes? F1 is definitely not a level playing field for drivers because the performance of the car plays such a crucial role. We might never see Hamilton and Russell battling it out with the same machine. And therefore, we would never know. But if they ever do, then my money is on Russell to come out on top.